I've also found them to, to be a suicide-minded people. And I have been reading, and you have been reading in the papers of the terrible judgment that's fallen upon them now. There is a disease that broke out among them, and it's incurable. I told Brother Brazel, I said, I've been praying for that over a year, that God would send judgment on them and let the world know it don't pay to be one of them. Now, they won't take what the Bible said. God has to act. They wouldn't take the true warning of Abraham back in Bible days. God had to act with foreign brimstone. And it seems that God is having to act in this terrible disease that's among them. And they say 75% of all that have it are homosexuals. And uh, I would think a lot more that have them are that's not confessed to it. And it's a terrible thing. But I also have been praying another prayer that God would judge the abortion clinics by a spirit of insanity falling upon the doctors and the nurses that perform. I want you to join in prayer with me on that. I've been doing this alone. Uh, but I have seen results, and I know others have prayed about the homosexual. Uh, this terrible spirit that's anti-God, hates God. I'm going to prove it to you by the Bible tonight. And uh, it's been a thing in the world that uh, we have a record of in the Bible 5,000 years. And God punished it with death 5,000 years ago. It was also put in the law of Moses, punishable by death. And even in the New Testament, it hasn't changed. And I was proving that to you tonight. Uh, God still judges it by death. And of course, the most uh, uh, severe punishment comes to those who have known the Lord and turned away from Him and did those things. And these people are in constant danger every time they breathe. Only a tiny little bit of mercy. Uh, every backslid homosexual, and I mean now uh, homosexual, I say that means lesbians too, it's all the same. Uh, there's only a little tiny, like a spider web holding them out of hell. Just one little breath of God and they're in hell. Because God hates it. There it is. Because there's... Somebody said, well, the number one sin that God hates is rebellion. You're right. But every homosexual is full of it. There ain't no such thing as having a homosexual that's not full of rebellion. And I'd like to read to you tonight in, in Romans. And... Uh, here proceeding, just letting you know the kind of people that gets into this. Now, let's watch close. The kind of people that slides into this thing, we're going to read about them the first few verses, and then we're going to show you 23 things that happen after they become one. 23 things that will happen. All right. I'm reading here in Romans. 18th verse, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Now, this is one of the things that's in this that I'm talking about tonight, ungodliness. And unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that when, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God hath showed it unto them. I want you to see the ones we're talking about tonight are folks who have been enlightened. You see, we're not talking about heathens here tonight in this chapter. We'll talk about them a little later on. But God has revealed to these folks some facts. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, 
being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without an excuse. Now, you hear a lot of folks giving all kinds of reasons for their sin. God said they're without an excuse. They don't have one single excuse. Because that when they knew God, see, they knew God, they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain. Here are some of the characteristics of the person that's headed into this. They're not thankful. They become vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart is darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up. God gave them up. When God gives you up, brother, it's tough. When God has to turn His back and walk off and give a person up, there ain't no need to pay him because He's done. You see, these folks slip into blasphemy, and they're cut off. All right? Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Notice, he's turning them loose now to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. God Almighty put Adam in the garden, and He made him a woman for His helpmate. God ordained that a man and a woman be married from the beginning. There is not one thing in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, not one place, at no time, under any circumstances, has God ever put approval upon two men living together or two women living together. There's a curse on it from Genesis to Revelation. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, for this cause, all these evil imaginations fed by your pornography, filthy talking. You watch these folks. It's always got a filthy mouth. They got a devil. I see men sometimes they can't even sit in the presence of godly women without bringing up ugly things. I immediately marked that feller as evil, sinful, shameful. Christian people are supposed to talk like Christians. And they're supposed to have their, a clean mouth and holy lips. Now some of you young folks get around here and talk ugly. Shame on you. I hope you haven't. But if you've been a talking ugly, you need to get on your prayer bones and pray because one of these spirits may jump on you. And when it does, goodbye. It's very dangerous. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. Vile, evil, ungodly affections. What are you talking about, Lord? What are you calling vile affections? For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Anybody but a fool 
knows what that's talking about. That's two women living together. And the Lord said, that's vile affections. Evil, terrible, vile things. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemingly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was made. This spirit is kindled and encouraged by a flaming lust demon from the pit. And you see, I've dealt with them before they committed suicide. I've dealt with them when they thought they had to have one another live and die, sink or swim. And they got one another, and all hell broke loose. They began to hate one another because the devil left. All he wanted to do is get them together and run them totally and completely, and then he leaves and hunts another victim. And then they're left there to look at one another. I read where Mr. Fowler, in one of his books, said, one Sunday on television, there was two lesbians telling what a wonderful life they had together. But he said they didn't put it on the news two weeks from then when they both committed suicide. He said, you don't hear that side. The miserable, wretched gays that are committing suicide every day. The most horrible crimes that's been committed is... It's been done by homosexuals. Twenty-seven died in Houston. Take them little teenage boys down in the bottom floor, tie them to a plank, torture them. And while they died, they got their thrills. That's perversion. That's the homosexual in his last throbs. It all leads to that. All fully, completely possessed homosexuals, lesbians, will finally become thrill killers or suicide. They commit suicide. They'll molest little children. They will molest their own. Any old time. This perverse spirit says they molest their own children. Behind it, that's there. Incest. You just name it. There is a spirit, a homosexual, bisexual spirit there somewhere. So when you can get so low and dirty and rotten and filthy to molest your own children, brother, that's, I think, I don't think the normal demons of hell can put up with that crowd. They don't put up with them in the penitentiary. I went down to Angola. Brother Brazel with me. You know that long building down there they told us? I said, that's where they put the homosexuals. They separate them. They have to separate them everybody else. They may have to dig them a place over in the corner of hell, a little bit deeper there, a little hotter for this crowd because they're anti-Christ. They are the people that Satan is raising up to bring in the tribulation period. They are killers. Turn them loose on Christians. They'll cut their bodies limb from limb because every one of them hates God. I'll prove that to you in a minute. They hate churches. They hate preachers. I had one to come in my office, great big old fella. He said, I want to tell you right now. He said, I hate churches. I hate preachers. He said, I even hate my mother. I hope she dies tonight. And she did. Those folks have got some kind of power to curse if you're not under the blood. Because their angel, you can read about him, from the pits comes from the ninth chapter of the book of Revelation. The king over them. All right. Now, I've read it to you, and I want to read you 23 characteristics. I want to show you 
what happens to the homosexual. What kind of person is he? What can you see? You know, here's 23 of them. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over. God gave them over. And when God does it, honey, there ain't nothing you can do. And God gave them over to a reprobate mind. A reprobate mind. Well, let's see what that says. That is a depraved person. Hopeless. Sinful. Vicious. Corrupt. And an unfit mind. Base. Condemned. Mind. A mind which God cannot approve. That is a reprobate mind. And God said about the homosexual and the lesbians, I'm going to turn them over to a reprobate mind. I'll do it myself. I'm not going to turn this over to Brother Barnes or Brother Basil. I'm going to personally turn them over to a reprobate mind. To do those things which are not convenient. It's not convenient for two boys to live together or two girls. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not calling boys that may play around a little bit growing up or girls a homosexual. But when you're grown and you had rather be with your same sex for the same reason you should want to go with somebody else, then you're one. All right, here's the 23 things being filled. Now, this is every homosexual, every lesbian. This is, God said, these 23 things are in them. In them. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Fornication. Wickedness. Covetousness. Maliciousness, full of envy, murder, deceit, or debate and deceit, malignancy, whispering, backbiters, haters of God. Did I tell you going to show you that? They'll go to church, honest to goodness, and sing and testify and sometimes get behind the pulpit and preach that they hate God. All they're there for is to dilute, tear down, break down, hurt other people, hinder a service. So they're backbiters and haters of God. Despiteful. Proud. Boasters. Inventors of evil things. Disobedient to parents. Without understanding, that must be a terrible thing, without understanding, covenant breakers, they can break more covenants than you can ever put together. They'll lie like a dog. You can't depend on them. Without natural affections. What is natural affections? It's a man and a woman getting married. Not two men getting married. Two women getting married. That's unnatural. Natural affections. Implacable. Unmerciful. Who knowing. Who knowing. The judgment of God. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Still in the New Testament. One translation said, should die, should be killed, put to death. People that do these things should die. And the judgments of God, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, unrighteousness. Here it is listed. God said, 
who knowing the judgments of God that they which do such things are worthy of death, not only to do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Think of it. Have any of you been rubbing shoulders with a homosexual or lesbian lately? If you have, you feel bad. There's demons with them, in them and around them. Better watch your step nowadays. Why am I talking about this tonight? If there ever was a time that parents need to watch their little boys and little girls growing up, it's right now. They're on every corner. They're in all the restrooms around the country. Don't let them go to the restroom by themselves. Daddy, go in there with them. Mother, go in there with your little girls. They're hanging around. I decided one day just to go into a certain courthouse, not too far from here, down in the basement. I picked out at least six or eight of them, just waiting for some little boy to come through that they could offer a few dollars or some candy. That's low, isn't it? That's low, isn't it? To warp and twist this little mind to where it can never be normal again. Twisted, thinking all wrong. Now the Bible said they're worthy of death not only to... Uh, do the same, are they this, but they have pleasure in them to do it. They always associate with the crowd. They read their literature. Uh, they feast on that rotten, dirty filth. And I want to tell you, some, uh, somebody around here put some pornography literature in that men's restroom in the wastebasket. I guess they got under conviction. But I want you to know that's full of devils. Now, you don't look at things like that. When you're thinking about getting married, you think about love. You think about being with somebody that you care for and you respect. When it comes down to the bare thing of pornography, it'll destroy you, it'll twist your thinking, and you won't be fit to be a husband. Because you don't know what it is to go to bed, the marriage bed undefiled. Because your mind is full of devils, full of sin, full of junk that was drug along from out yonder somewhere. Somebody said, oh, well, you need to learn the facts of life. Even a geese, the dumbest things that walk in the barnyard know how to mate. And legs and set on them and have little gauze on them. Anybody that's in love like they ought to be in love, the rest of it will take care of itself. That's all the Lord said. The Bible gives you all you really need to know about it. If you're in love like you ought to be, you know how to give, you know how to take. You'll love one another regardless of the price. Wife and I have been married 45 years and I never have told her to leave. And she ain't never told me to leave. And I ain't going to tell her to leave. Because I'd be lying. And I don't believe in lying. I love my wife. And we're going to stay together as long as we live. That's right. And she's got a few rights too. That's right. I believe in a woman staying in her place just like the Bible said. Well, I believe if you're going to rule your wife, you should do it with love and not with a rod of iron. Amen. That's what the Bible said to do. If you love her as Christ loved the church, everything will be all right. And about the only women that won't respond to real love is the kind I'm reading tonight. Now, if you're married to a lesbian, she'll never respond. She'll hate you. She'll fight you. And so will a man. If he's A bisexual, he'll never in this world make a husband fit to kill. I'm getting down there tonight. I got a bunch of young people here, and I want them to be clean. I want them to be free of these spirits, and I don't want to pick them up when they run into them somewhere. Amen. 
You see, <clears throat> I got these folks call me all the time. They inform me how many gay bars there are in Shreveport, you know, and all these things, you know. And uh, I've seen a few delivered. And all could get delivered if they really wanted to get deliverance. But you got to want to. You know, somebody said, well, I just can't resist him. If I felt that way about one, he felt that way about me, Brother Brazel, I'd go up and mash his nose. We'd have a knockdown drag out, and that'd help us stay away from one another. But I, you know, I never felt that way. I didn't know there was such a thing. When I was growing up. We all went to the to the river and to the creek and went in swimming without a rag on. We never thought about any man that'd be interested in looking at some some boy. We thought, my God, that would be some nut, you know. And we didn't have any around. And really, it is. They are a nut. We hadn't heard about none of them. We didn't know any such thing existed in our day. Might have been a few around. We didn't know about, but if they'd ever found them out, they had two clubs. The KKKs back in them days. Brother let a tarred and feathered and rolled them out of town on a pole. That's what ought to be done today, Art. Sure would have to have a lot of poles and, and uh, over in San Antonio, Houston, some other places. A lot of them down there. I hope to God they wake up and decide the only way they'll ever get rid of that terrible disease they got is to go to the altar and repent and get God's forgiveness and, and get healed. I ain't going to pray for none of them to get healed until I hear them speaking in tongues. You fellas, just go ahead and rot. Because that's what I ask to happen to you. And I ain't going to pray for you until you get right and quit that devilish stuff. All right, let's look at these. He uh, said something about uh, malignant here. And this is ill will, badness, implacable. This is uh, heartless. These people are heartless, loveless, merciless. But tonight, talking about all of this and laying it down to the line, I want you to know that if you hadn't stepped over the deadline and blasphemed the Holy Ghost and cursed God in your heart, I've had a lot of things happen to me in my day, in my time. Well, I said, no, we were talking to Brother Brazel and Brother uh, Huntley. I said, there's some things I don't understand. I said, I don't understand punishing a person in hell forever and ever and ever and ever. But I said, you see, I don't have all the facts. And God does. And He never does anything wrong. Never. And He'll always get to you when you get in the right spirit. He'll always finally come around. But you don't make Him do nothing. You know, He, he knows He's got all the facts. And you know, we can go out and do something and sin against Him for 40 years and then come in now, God wants you to change everything up. Yeah, right. Push button. He's been pushing your button for 40 years and you ain't done nothing. Just all of a sudden, start bowing. He don't do it that way. God is merciful, but He's tough. He hates sin. He won't compromise with sin. Somebody said, oh, God of love wouldn't do that. That's the only kind would. Right. Had a judge. I was looking at him a while ago. He walked into my house. 
famous judge, over 20 parishes, just retired. You know, I watched him from the time he was just a uh, lawyer, climb on up, district attorney, judge, right on through. I talked to him about it a lot of times. I said, I watched you being fair and square. And I said, the thing that really impressed me, when you were district attorney, you sent my brother to jail. He said, yeah, how's that? I said, well, my brother and a whole bunch more boys, about 23 of them, and a lot of them are big football stars, my brother was, and uh, got his pass to go to college on it. But I said, a bunch of these boys, all their dads were big shots in Spring Hill. They owned stores and banks and what have you. And these boys decided they'd get together one night and break in a few stores and take them out some stuff and have a party. And uh, they thought, well, surely, you look who we are. But I said, Judge Bowling, you sent these boys to the pea farm uh, during the summertime where they could work it out and get back to school. And I said, you didn't pay any attention to the bankers and the businessmen and, and the preachers and what have you. You just let them have it because why let these big shot boys by and send the tramps to jail? I said, I made up my mind right then. You're going to be great in your work. And my mama, she cried and begged me to go talk to him. I said, no. I said, I'm not going to talk to him. He's my friend. He's doing his duty. I said, the best thing that ever happened to that boy is down there on the pea farm uh, raising peas. She couldn't see it, but I'll tell you one thing. My brother's never broke the law since. Did I know one thing about it? It broke him. It was good for him. Had they all got out, they'd have probably went to the penitentiary the next time or something worse. So God is no respecter of persons, no big eyes, no little U's when it comes to sin. The bigger you are, the higher you are, the harder you fall. Right. right. Well, I'm very happy tonight to turn this around just a little bit. We talked about the old, the unhappy gays, the march of the homosexual, and they're marching. They're marching. They're really marching. And they're having the way in the elections. That's right. And to show you the power of a homosexual. Watch Jones. Oh, he was a bisexual, sure, but he was he was a homosexual. He had such power over 900 people until he compelled every last one of them to drink poison and die. That's the power that these folks get because they're anti-Christ. And these spirits are powerful. Can you think of that mothers taking their little babies and letting them drink poison just because that homosexual or bisexual said it, he had power. It was from the devil. That little baby lay in the, in the sand screaming in agony, and she grabs another. There it lay, screaming in agony. Then finally, no more children, and she takes it. Reverend Joan. There she is. The spirit of the Antichrist. You saw a manifestation of it there. The spirit of a pervert. There was a time that that man knew the truth in Indianapolis. I hated to ever mention that. But 
there was a time he knew the truth. And God turned him over to a reprobate mind. Well, he picked up the pistol after they were all dead and put it to his temple and pulled the trigger and went to hell. And I tell you, they were not only do they force other people into suicide, they'll do it, they'll commit suicide themselves. They'll drive you into anything. You listen to them. The thing to do is to always keep your hands clean. Now the Bible said here in First Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Ninth verse, know ye not that the unrighteous and that Bible said here, the homosexual, that was one of them unrighteous, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody lie to you. They may have license and they may preach in a church. They may have a big church, but they go into hell. Don't be deceived. They're hell by Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. I told that old boy, one of them, I said, Why in the living world you come over here and meet a happy? I said, You hate everybody in the world because you you hate yourself. And I never have seen a homosexual lesbian didn't hate yourself. Really they do weed the way down inside. That's why they finally kill themselves. They hate this self because they're lost between two worlds. They're lost between the masculine and the feminine world. Just floating along like somebody missed orbit, went out and orbited around the sun. Uh, it's just too bad. They're out of orbit and they're drifting between the two and they're living in the realm of of demonic powers. Because even the Antichrist, when he comes, the Bible said, he will have no, he will not desire women. And any man that's a man that don't, he's a homosexual. So you see who's heading the whole thing up. The Antichrist is getting it ready because they are killers and he needs killers. He needs somebody to chop folks' head off. He needs somebody that will dismember them. He needs a bunch of sadists. And this is a crowd that will do it with glee. Effeminate. Sissy men. I don't know why they don't try to address, you know, there's a whole lot of men stores you could go there and say, Hey, dress me up like a man. I want to look like a man. Come out of them old psychedelic clothes, and high heel shoes, and gold buckles, and one of them silly chains. Love. And there, you know, that means I love the same sex, you know. And then he wonders why everybody. That's a real man of it. He can't understand. Well, yeah, oh, I can't stand them. They make me sick. Now, abusers of them, themselves of mankind, here it is again, hitting it again. And it's all through the Bible. I just don't have time to get to all of it tonight. Nor drunkards, nor, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, revelers, nor extortioners, nor shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, here is something good. And such were some of you. And such were past tense. Some of you. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified, how? In the name of the Lord Jesus 
and by the Spirit of God. There's only one escape, and that's through the name of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. I like that. God didn't shut the door forever. And I don't think we've got anybody tonight that wants to be a lesbian or homosexual. But I tell you one thing, there's a whole lot of folks around you every day that would like to make one out of you. And you're going to have to watch as well as pray. Right. I hadn't been preaching too long when I caught myself. Some young fella, and he was getting too close to me. And I got out of the bed and went to the woods. I stayed out from 2 o'clock to daylight. And they said, where have you been? Uh, some of the rest of them, you know. I said, oh, I've been a-praying. My God in heaven, I had. Another time, I had to sleep all night on a church pew. Because I ain't going to hang around this guy. Had to do over, I think I'd... Somebody said it's against the law to hit one of them. That'd be the best fine I ever paid. <laughs> but right on the other hand, if they want, if they want to repent, quit it. Call on the name of Jesus, get baptized in the name of Jesus, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'll be there patting them on the back, praying for them. But that's what I'm supposed to do. That's what I want to do. I'm glad I've seen some of them delivered from this horrible thing. You know, when the devil gets through with a person, brother, he... At 23, now you talk about it, a character. I wonder if the devil, time he gets all them in him, isn't a little jealous. Thinks this fellow may be worse than I am. I guess he's not. My friend, that is 23. The most horrible sins and things that can happen to a human being. Now you talk about a reprobate. When all 23 of them becomes a reality, you got a Charles Manson. You know what Charles did? He put spells on his followers and they went out and killed for him. He had demons. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not afraid of any of them because I know a name. And I know about some blood. And I know about some power. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm so happy for Jesus tonight and His great love to all of us. Don't ever be afraid. Just don't get alone with these people, but always remember, call on the name of Jesus and say, Jesus, I plead the blood. And there ain't no devil going to touch you. That's right. Just say, Jesus, I plead your precious blood. Don't become fearful. Because that's their way of trying to get an entrance. When you really become fearful, of course, some of you, you new converts, didn't know. But don't let the devil scare you. All he can do is talk. 
And he is a wind jammer, a bluff, and he knows his limitations. He knows he better not get close to the blood. He don't want to plead the blood, call on his name. Young people, we're in a city right here in Menden that has hundreds and hundreds of homosexuals and lesbians in it. They had ever turned. And I'm preaching to you tonight to warn you to watch. And every one of you do you good to read this first chapter of Romans every once in a while. Because I know I'm like a book. And a woman on long distance the other day was just talking to me about her husband and uh, thousands of miles away and I said, Joe, I said, a homosexual likes to go out and run around on his wife and come in and brag about it. Then I said, this time he's on a high and he is a plum smart aleck. And then he gets on a low and he wants to come home crawling and wants you to take him back and repent. And then as soon as he gets leveled off again, he's gone again to the gay bars and what have you. And I said, they're always up and down. They're emotional. She said, you have described my husband to a T. Well, I say, he may be interested in more than the girls at the bar. Because this is one of the characteristics. And they could cry like a baby when they get caught. And I was at a minister calling me. Long distance, way up north. He said, Brother Barnes. He said, I got the shock of my life. I said, What is it? I got two homosexuals in the church. I said, Oh. I said, Well, tell me how you find out. Oh, he said, uh, He said, uh, One of them confessed. I said, He did. And I said, Why did he confess? Well, he said, I just well to tell you the whole story. I said, yeah, go ahead. He said there was a young fella fixing to marry my daughter. And this fella come down just to crying and confessing about what they had done. I said, you know why, don't you? I said, he was trying to break up the marriage. And I said, you better break it up. He said, I never thought of that. I said, they sly as a fox. But you know what? Could happen to that fellow, and I wouldn't be surprised if it don't. When they start telling it to hurt other people, the Bible said they're worthy of death. And that, I think, should happen to them. If they're going to go out and blast it just to hurt somebody, that's trying to pull out of it, Somebody's trying to quit, and they go off and tell it they ought to die. That's what the Bible said. Now, I'm quoting the Bible. It said they're worthy of death. Right. Because all they want to do is to hurt and to destroy, hurt other people. You know, it's a strange thing. They always know when they discern. Across the nation, everywhere, I've dealt with them and been called in on a lot of cases. I was called in on one, and I already knew. This lady was a leader. And uh, I kept watching her. I said, I think I want to shake hands with her. And I went to the platform. Well, about a year or two later, I was called in on a case, and lo, she was there. She was one of the lessons. 
And I said to her, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, when did I know you were one? She said, the night you shook hands with me. That demon knows the very minute they're discerned by the Spirit. A lady came to the general conference and squatted down. My wife and I chair. said, we'd like for you all to go out with us tonight. I felt the Spirit. I said, huh? Sorry. Later, when it all come out and she confessed it, I said, and when did I know it? Oh, she said, the night I squatted down by your chair. I said, I knew you knew it. The devil knows when the light hits him. I was standing with Brother E.F. Kennan, District Superintendent of Arkansas. We was at General Conference. And there's less of this in, the, in our movement than anywhere else in the world, and there shouldn't be none. Anyway, he said to me, he said, Brother Barnes, said, I know you can discern homosexual just about anywhere. He said, how do you do it? Well, that's sort of like asking a fellow how watermelon tasted. You've never tasted it. You know, it's really hard to tell, but about that time, an evangelist walked by, and I felt the Spirit. I said, see that, that evangelist? He said, yeah. I said, I ain't saying no more, but... You know. Next time I saw him, he said, Hey. He said, You know what happened to that evangelist? I said, What? He said, They called, it, called him down to YMCA for the white man. I said, Yeah. Did I tell you? He said, You sure did. And I'll guarantee you one thing if I ever met the feller, I'd ask him, When did I know it? He'd say, When I walked by you and Brother Cannon. They know it. I was in a singing, big singing pack house when the Rambos were living right. And we were sitting on the platform and Buck said, Did I hear the Lord help you to find homosexuals? I said, Yes, sometimes. I said, Not always, but sometimes if he wants to. He said, there's one here, and I know he's from out of state. And, uh, but I'm just wondering if you can find him in this crowd. I said, on the front seat, right against him. He said, you're right. He didn't look like one, but he was one. Right. The Holy Spirit knows, because the Holy Spirit pulls back. And if you sit in, in a room with one and counsel them, you feel like you need to take a bath as soon as you get home. Because it's an unclean, corrupt. You get the feeling you fell in a cesspool. And it's around you, not in you, but you just feel it. I don't know how they stand this out. That's why they commit suicide against the king. But tonight, as the musicians come, young people, what's this world of spirits that's got upon us here? You know, one of the symptoms of this spirit is stubbornness and rebellion against authority. You know, that's why Satan got kicked out of heaven. He rebelled against authority. I was talking to a doctor the other day, and he, we was talking, and he said, you know, we are talking about the devil. And uh, he said, you know, he said, the old boy's doing a lot of damage, a lot of stuff. I said, yeah. But I said, I've often said, if they caught all the devils and tied them up and throw them in hell, sin would go on in the human race. They might not have the power to project 
and use a demon to go jump on somebody else. But he, as an individual, if he's not born again, he's got sin in his blood. As long as that sin's in his blood, he's going to sin. There's a lot of you young married couples tonight. Stay clean and holy and pure before God. Walk with God. Pray together. You never will understand one another altogether. God never intended for you to. He hid that from you. I know us men, if we ever understand all there is to understand about any instrument, we don't care too much about it anymore. You've got somebody, you're married to somebody that's got a spirit, a soul, and a body. And they got their thinking and their way. And you've got yours. And what a marvelous thing it is to come together and to love one another in spite of faults and faith. If you're not big enough, young people, to forgive and let love cover a multitude of faults and failures. Don't ever get married. But for God's sakes, don't ever live with the same sex. Because there's some give and take. The best thing ever happened to a man is to marry a woman that don't agree with him on everything in the living world. He'll grow up a little bit. We spoiled brats, you know, when we got married. Mama spoiled us. And sometimes the wife has to unspoil. And, and the girls are spoiled. About all they know to do is to use a cam cutter. And a, and a loaf of bread if they can find one. So you wind up eating them good old pudding bean sandwiches. Well, if you love her, eat it and say... It's worth it to have you. Anything. That's right. Anything. Right. Love one another. Love is a big thing. Powerful thing. That's right. You learn to get along, you know, and grow up together. How many ever seen Liberace? You know, I used to sell him ignorant. He ain't never married. He'd have grown up if he'd have gotten a wife. And they told him a few things that he needed to do. But I've been seeing in the papers he got a, a Steve or Bill or something. Stays around with him. But don't he make you sick? He's a great piano player, they say, but he makes me sick even getting over to it. <laughs> the time he gets up and walks to it, I think, I, I'd rather hear uh, one of them old... We used to make the fiddles, you know, out of corn stalks. Put some rolls them on it. I think I'd enjoy that better than hearing Liberace. Because I know he ain't right. There's something wrong with it. You can be a you can be a piano player without being a liberace. Be a liberace. Some man say I got you. That ain't no good. But I got a great crowd of young people that love the Lord here tonight. <laughs>